Today we're playing Splinter Twin, but with Mill and on Magic Arena. Hello everyone, it's uh, probably better known as Efron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. And this week, we're playing Splinter Twin but with Mill and on Magic Arena. So for the last few against the odds bowls, I keep putting Terezi and Mindbreaker on there because I think we can build a really sweet deck around the card. The problem is y'all never vote for Terezi and Mindbreaker for some reason. So this week I decided to just pull rank and play the Terezi and Mindbreaker deck that I've been wanting to build anyway to see if it would actually work. So this deck, as you will see, is essentially Splinter Twin, except we win by milling our opponent out and it's legal on Magic Arena. So let's talk about the deck, the combo, what we're trying to do, jump into some games, see it in action, so combo piece number one, Teresian Mindbreaker. Seven mana six for Juggernaut. When it attacks, defending player mills half their library rounded up. Not a very good magic card, except it has a very aggressive unearth cost of just four mana. When we are getting this back for one turn from the graveyard for four mana, it's actually pretty scary. It's dealing six damage. More important, it's milling our opponent half their library. But we are trying to turn this into a two card combo kill with the help of Burvak the Grand Eloquent. Burvak just says if the opponent would mill a card, they mill two twice as many cards instead. So essentially, if we can play Burvok on turn three and then unearth a Mindbreaker on turn four, our opponent's gonna mill their entire deck and lose when they draw for their turn to milling out. So that is the goal of the deck and that's what makes this kind of like Splinter Twin. If you think about Splinter Twin, three drop, four drop, win the game. Well, if we can get Mindbreaker in the graveyard so we can unearth it, this combo's exactly the same. Three drop, four drop, win the game, plus it's even in it colors. So for this plan to work, we gotta get Treezy and Mindbreaker in the graveyard. We are not planning on casting it for seven mana. We're unearthing it for four mana. For this, we got a ton of cantrips and card filtering options. Faithless Looting can just get cards from our hand to the graveyard. Chart, of course, the same. Consider can surveil cards into the graveyard. Lightning Axe can kill something and let us discard a card. So in our perfect world, on turn one or turn two, we get the Mindbreaker in the graveyard. Turn three, Burvok. Turn four, Unearth Mindbreaker, win the game on the spot. We also got some removal and more card filtering. Spike Field Hazard, Phasing Hope, Unholy Heat, taking advantage of the fact we get a lot of cards in our graveyard. Expressive iteration, it's just busted in our colors. Why would we not play this if we're looking for specific combo pieces? We also get a few counters to protect our combo. Spell Pierce, Juari Disruption, Archmage's Charm, Mana Base. The main thing here is because Terezi and Mindbreakers Unearth effect is four mana in three of its blue mana. We want every single one of our lands to tap for blue. So we don't want to be in a position where we're like, oh, we got two mountains on the battlefield on turn four and we can't combo because of it. So we got a ton of dual lands that make blue or red mana in the sideboard. Crackling Drake, probably the most interesting card. The one downside of our combo is it does rely on the graveyard. It's very unlikely that we can get to seven mana, cast a mind breaker, untap with a mind breaker, and win with the combo that way. So if our opponent can shut down our graveyard and shut down the unearth on mind breaker, we're gonna have a hard time winning because we don't really have a backup plan for winning the game. Crackling Drake comes in against graveyard. If our opponent's playing uh, whatever, Leyline of the Void, Rest in Peace, any of those graveyard hate spells, this is our way to win the game through graveyard hate. Otherwise, a bunch more removal, a bunch more counters for control, and that is is twin but with mill for magic arena that's our against the odds deck for this week so let's see if it works can we mill people out how close is burvok and terezi and mindbreaker to literal splitter twin but on magic arena let's find out thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoy it and i'll be back in a bit for the wrap up need some brothers war cards and snag them from our awesome sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish against the odds time we are splinter twinning <laughs> but with Mill on Magic Arena, we're playing some Teresian Mindbreaker combo, which it is essentially Splinter Twin. <laughs> sort of. Close. I mean, three drop, four drop, win the game. Essentially Splinter Twin. Well, I mean, this sounds fine. We're missing Burvok, which is our other combo piece, but we got a ton of card filtering, and we got the Mindbreaker that we can loot away. Well, there's a Burvok. All right, well, if our opponent does not counter our stuff... This looks like a turn three or turn four kill. All right, discard the Mind Breaker. Discard Fading Hope against the blue deck, I think. Opponent foretells Spy or Bluff Canal Go. The question's gonna be with our opponent, kinda looking like mono blue, do we just run out our stuff? Co Whoa. Cosmos Charger. Oh, opponent's like an actual foretell deck, okay. Well, I don't think I've ever played against a Fortel deck before. I've never seen anyone play Cosmos Charger. Uh, all right, Unholy Heat. See if we can kill the Charger. Opponent, Fortel's in response, sure. 
Well, I mean, opponent's step down. I think we just go for it. Right now, Burvok, we do need a land. The nice thing about Mindbreaker in Unearth is Unearth is not actually counterable. I mean, I guess you could stifle it or something, but it's not, you're not casting the spell. So normal counters don't work against it. Opponent gonna draw some cards. If our opponent taps down and we draw land, we definitely go for it. If not, Cosmos Charger. If not, I don't know what we do here. I wonder if they can see the, I mean, the combo is all visible. The Mindbreaker's in the graveyard, Burvak's on the battlefield. Like, it's kind of obvious. All right, land? Okay, opponent taps down, we draw the land, and it is Mill Twin time. There's a Mindbreaker. Attack, mill, doubled with Burvok, half and half is all, and that's the game on turn four. <laughs> Busted! Opponents will have to learn not to tap out against us. I think against a mono blue deck, we probably want more counters. Do we need Crackling Drake is the real question. Go down the Fading Hopes. So Crackling Drake is, it's basically our tech to get around Graveyard Hate. If someone's gonna rest in pieces or something, it really makes the, the Mindbreaker combo hard. If we have to cast Mindbreaker, Sorcery Speed for seven, it's a lot worse. Uh, we really wanna be unearthing it. How worried are we about Graveyard Hate? I think we want all the counters. I don't know, it's a Fortel deck, let's just run it. Bring in more counters for protection and see what happens. Now, opponent's tech is interesting. I've literally never seen anyone play Mono Blue Fortel before. We're not close to comboing, but we can really slow down our opponent. Leyline of Anticipation, okay. How do we wanna order our lands? Yeah, let's start with the untapped land in case we need to Spell Pierce or Mystical Dispute. Four tails. Hmm, yeah, let's play a tap land, that's fine. Plays a land, uh, Sorcery Speed as foretold, okay. Uh, we will counter that, not really taking advantage of that Leyline. <laughs> Well, that's expressive iteration. Burvok to hand. Mystical Dispute Library. Snag the land. Pl Man, expressive iteration is so busted. Play the Shivan Reef past the turn. It's so insane. What do you got? We still have Mystical Dispute if we need it. We also, we still need to find the Mind Breaker. We haven't really hit any looting effects. No Faithless Lootings. No Charter Courses. So we do need to find a, a Mind Breaker to get in the graveyard. A moon it. Please play stuff in since beat opponent. I'm starting to, oh my goodness, Cosmos Charger. Okay, I am not really sure what our opponent's deck is trying to do, but we're gonna try to kill this Cosmos Charger. It's one of those cards, no one plays it, so you assume if your opponent's playing it, it's probably important to what their deck's trying to do because <laughs> otherwise, why would it be? Okay, we will appreciate the treasures, thank you. Those might actually come in handy. Another Burvok. Well, we are again going to try to kill this Cosmos Charger. So far, this lane line has done quite literally nothing. Not even like figuratively nothing, just like straight up literally nothing. Passing. Well, yeah, let's try to draw a couple cards. And opponent, game one, we got to see the full combo. Game two, I don't know what our opponent's deck was doing, but sweet, I guess. Mill twin, <laughs> got him, got him, got him. Yeah, sweet. Against the odds time, we are breaking more minds. <laughs> on Magic Arena, some Mill Twin in Historic this week, and uh, you know, sounds fine. I mean, we got the Mind Breaker, we got a way to discard it, we got some removal, our opponent <laughs> brutally mulliganing into Oblivion, which uh, we will accept, we're playing against the odds. <laughs> Keep going. All right, opponent's at five. Well, it's Historic, so we're not getting Trond. Huh, eh, let's just chart a course, actually, I think that's better. We will discard Mind Breaker and pass the turn. Opponent. What do you got on the mold of five opponent? So glad they didn't. Oh my god. <laughs> we kind of are getting drawn. <laughs> this is about as close as it gets. All right, opponent. Did they mulligan for Lotus Field Stifle? They did. Oh my, this is. This is as close to getting Tron as possible on Arena, I think. <laughs> Opponent's got the land the taps for three. Well, we will express a iteration. Charm in hand. Are we playing the tap land? Yeah, let's just play the island. Actually, I think that was a mistake. <laughs> Probably should have just played the steam events, but whatever. Opponent. Fable passage. Cracks it. Well, this is, might be an issue. Opponent's got a whole hunk of mana over there. Gets a plan. So this is like blue white lotus field control i guess Ugh. narset you know what's really good against a handful of char charted courses and faithless lootings <laughs> oh my god and it's a fairy Ugh. we're not drawing cards this turn i think we do spike field hazard this narset this gets narset low enough that if our opponent wants to draw a card with it they're gonna have to give it up even though this is looking bad and our opponent's got a lot of busted planeswalkers 
we do have the mind breaker in the graveyard so it's not impossible that we get rid of this narset find burvac and just combo kill to very time raveler counter you please oh, all right opponent does not have a counter are we cashing a narset please i mean we know holy heat if we want if we have to stick proctor all right another another stifle that doesn't actually impact us at all okay archmage's charm is pretty good here we got to kill the narset because we need to be able to cast faithless lootings yeah kill the narset the proctor is not as scary now that our opponent already has lotus field down they've already kind of done their thing um yeah let's just play the land tapped and pass opponent well we encounter something or attempt to oh big to fairy yes <laughs> that counts as something uh wow opponent still doesn't have a counter okay that's good news we will take the one we're kind of in this game still oh spell pierce okay well let's first expressive iteration oh there's burvak all right burvak to hond and then looting library land so what we'd like to do is get to the point where we can Ooh, all right don't kill it we don't know what that last card is but we're to the point now where if our opponent doesn't have interaction we can just win next turn we have spell pierce although spell pierce isn't looking super great with the amount of mana our opponent has maybe it'll be relevant opponent passes well i mean you can't counter mind breaker the blowout is they have removal dis oh maybe our oh my goodness we're gonna oh my goodness we're gonna win discontinuity we will spell pierce this spell pierce is going to do something and now we just mind breaker game <laughs> I cannot believe we beat that. Okay, well, <laughs> taking down Arena Tron with Arena Splinter Twin. Gonna break some minds, gonna break some minds. One blue mat, what they have to have? Fading Hope or something? If they bounce the Burvok, this does fall apart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right another another stifle okay well this is this is okay since they stifled the trigger we still get to keep our mind breaker for next turn but that does keep our opponent alive for a turn uh yeah i mean i guess we faithless looting we're not doing anything else with this mana discard a land discard a hmm let's discard the chart of course i kind of like keeping the backup burbok we got enough mana now that if our opponent like draws a wrath or something and sweeps away the burbok we can just burbok and mindbreaker all in one turn opponent could draw too i mean i know it was a mulligan but they mulligan intentionally for their combo and they played three pretty busted planeswalkers in a row and a discontinuity and we'd somehow survived who are they hovering there all the storm giants if our oh my goodness okay well uh i guess our opponent's hoping we chump block with burvok which uh <clears throat> we are not going to do <laughs> opponent do opponents not realize how this works? does our opponent not know that they're just dead here i mean it's twin time opponent stepped out full controlling for some reason all right mind breaker twin assembled combat swing and it's so satisfying <laughs> it's so satisfying to do one thing and watch your opponent's entire library disappear <laughs> oh opponent takes a little damage not that that's relevant and mind breaker goes away and you're a cool opponent <laughs> oh, got him maybe this deck is actually good uh all right counters seem very good against what our opponent's doing uh, the the age-old question are we bringing in crackling Gregs to get around graveyard hate i think we go down removal that doesn't hit planeswalkers like lightning axe maybe fading hope are we gonna try to bring in a crackles is the question are we uh, rest in peace seems like a a thing that could happen yeah let's let's bring into two crackling drakes all right well let's see if we can keep twinning them <laughs> so far so good on to game two tron opponent load it lotus field tron lotus field tron versus mill splinter twin <laughs> the classic modern matchup coming to arena <laughs> oh well i guess we play by your bluff since we drew it about it leads on all the storm giants into untap land well we didn't get we didn't get tron no lotus field stifle shenanigans opponent we will worry disruption basically anything especially in our set which is so good against our deck all right well untap eggs press of iteration well crackles to hand steam vents library storm carf ghost all right what do you got strict proctor okay i mean that is good our unholy heats are not on yet so this does mean a future lotus field could get us oh spike field 
we really want to mill this and look for and look for Mindbreaker, but Spike Field plus Unholy Heat does kill Strict Proctor. Our opponent missed their land drop, right? So yeah. Being able to kill that does seem important-ish. Let's keep expressing our iteration. There's the Mindbreaker. Okay. That goes to hand. Burvok Library, land exiled. Play the land. Pass and discard to hand size. This actually kind of works. All right, opponent. Well, hopefully they didn't draw Lotus Field right now. All right, they did not. So we're gonna try to kill this Proctor, I think. It does only take one card now since we got the Mind Breaker in the graveyard. Even a watered down on Holy Heat's still pretty good. Ooh, and the gate. Well, play the tap land, pass the turn. We're gonna wait, we're gonna be patient. And opponent <laughs> does it find Tron and scoops it up. Just keep twinning him, I guess. <laughs> Sweet. Against the odds time. We're doing some more twinning. Oh God, elves. Oh. How does this hand ever beat elves? I mean, I guess we just somehow combo before they kill us. We have no removal though. <sighs> All right, well. <laughs> About it, Elvish Clan Caller. Well, let us surveil. Yeah, sure, we'll keep another. Like, so basically, we gotta get a Mind Breaker in the graveyard as quickly as possible. We got the Burvok. So if we can like luck into milling a Mind Breaker, maybe, well, mill the land. Draw a another Burvok, okay. Okay, a little Burvok heavy at the moment. I don't think Mill can kill our stuff. Oh, another board. Oh, Elves. Elves is gonna get so good. Now that, oh, there's a mind breaker, but how do we get it in the graveyard? I don't think we can afford to pass and discard the hand size. Yeah, let's iterate. Oh my God, Lightning Axe. Lightning Axe might, might give us a shot. Fading Hope in Hand. Burvok Library, Lightning Axe Exiled. Then we can play Shivin Reef. Lightning Axe, I guess Imperius Perfect here. Discard the Mind Breaker. So we gotta live two more turns. Can we survive two more turns? Hits us down to nine. Okay, so play the land, play Burvok. This could work. We got the Fading Hope. We might be able to just barely survive about it. Oh, Coco. Well, let's counter that. Why is there a warning? Oh, Allosaurus Shepherd. Oh, that's all green spells. Okay, yeah, we... <clears throat> editor, editor, make me look smart there. <laughs> Edit out that spell pierce that we almost did nothing with and lost because of. <laughs> all right, Pony gets another Lord. So they have one, two, three, four, five. If they play a land, they can Allosaurus Shepherd. So I think we actually awkwardly just have to bounce the Shepherd now so they won't have mana to overrun us. Spikefield Hazard to the bottom, I guess, doesn't really matter. Okay, do we survive? We can block with Burvok. We might survive here. This would be, what, a 2-2? Two, two? Maybe a 3-3? Three, 3-6-8? Three? Three, what if they have double Lord? That's, oh, then we got a chump. Okay, come on, not a Lord, not a Lord. We're gonna survive. Oh my goodness, we're gonna win this. <laughs> wow, we be elves drawing infinite Lords and Coco without much removal at all one removal spell well uh mind breaker <laughs> go to combat and twin them <laughs> i love this deck <laughs> an opponent realizes what's happening scoops it up okay we're bringing in literally every removal spell in existence and we're gonna go down those spell pierces and probably some other counter spells because our opponent has a lot of counter hate maybe like a charter course and fading hope? Let's try it. I mean, we have a lot of removal now and a, and a couple of sweepers. So things should get easier. I don't think we need crackling Drake. Not super worried about our opponent having graveyard hate. Elves usually isn't super graveyard hate heavy. Well, okay. The all cantrip hand. Elvish mystic for our opponent. Well, let's do some faithless looting. Well, there's Burvok, I guess. Wow, so many lands. Discard, discard. We really wanted removal. Opponent says nice. That was not the nicest Faithless Looting from our perspective, but sure. Oh, we really gotta hit a removal spell. Mindbreaker, okay, well. 
Consider I'm gonna land into any one mana removal spell. New opponent emoting. Well, this is going to go poorly. <laughs> Maybe we should not have kept the all cantrip hand. All right, land our elves for free because of elvish arch druid and it's oh no, and it ooze too. This keeps getting worse. Passes. So they probably have Coco. All right, we we have to like brothers to end now. <laughs> Have we hit every consider? Ooh, there's a braid. That is something at least. I mean, I guess we just abrade the arch druid. The ooze is definitely a problem with our combo, but the arch druid is a, a combo with us living. <laughs> you can't combo if you're dead. That's one thing I've learned over the years of making magic content. <laughs> Words of advice here on this week's Against the Odds. Uh, all right. Well, Arch drew it down, but Coco into Alisor, Shepherd, and another Lord. Oh, we finally need one of these considers to pay off. Oh, and another Lord, my God. So we get to consider, and we have to hit exactly Brothers Hood End. I believe the only card that can save us at this point. Opponent hits us to seven. Gonna eat the Faithless Looting, I assume. Yep. Well, all right. Is it Brothers Hood End? It's a Burbach to the Graveyard into Lightning Axe into even more lands all right and we're dead we can kill one thing but killing one thing doesn't doesn't actually save us here honestly i don't think we change anything i think we just run it back i think we have the right setup we just maybe we shouldn't have kept the cantrip hand or maybe we just got unlucky with our cantrips but regardless being on the play should be helpful all right we will play first all right this is better we got cantrip still but we also have a removal spell which is nice about it forest and ooh, no one drop all right that's good news uh let's mill the land into chart a course now play the land chart course we're hitting our removal this game you know we'll just discard a land all right this is this is a pretty good hand against elves no sweeper but we got a ton of targeted removal kessel garin brig and a lord for us to kill ooh, there's a mine we in Lightning Axe to discard the Mind Breaker, but we still need one more turn. So yeah, let's just Spike Field Hazard. Kill the kill the Lord. The Lord that draws cards. Play the Coast. And probably just consider for a land, I guess. Elvish Mystic, sure. The opponent passes. Consider. Well, yeah, let's mill Faithless Looting. We know he's cast it from the graveyard. Into Faithless Looting anyway. Yeah, let's just untap. Ooh, okay, this is this is actually perfect. This is exactly what we want. So we get the untap land, we get to play Burvok, and this sets us up for the surprise kill. Because we can lightning axe on our opponent's end step, discard the mind breaker and win. Scavenging news, does that change things? Uh, so now we can't lightning axe discard mind breaker. Okay, we got a lightning axe discard pillar of flame. And then we can faithless looting as long as we draw land then we can still combo next turn. And the problem is if we discard Mindbreaker, they can just eat it because it'll be in the graveyard so they can eat it with ooze in response. So now as long as there's a land in our top three cards, we, we just mill twin them. All right, ooze down. Oh, all right, well, there's the land. Discard Mindbreaker in anything and play the land and break some mines the opponent says nice and i agree and mail your deck and wow we took down aggro too is this deck just actually good <laughs> i thought this deck was a meme but maybe this deck just actually maybe it really is splinter twin <laughs> that name was kind of hyperbolic but now i'm starting to convince myself that we actually did just make splinter twin on arena sweet against the odds time we are doing some more splinter twinning <laughs> in historic windmill uh doing some some treasy and mind breaking and let's see what our opponent's up to this hand yeah only uh well i guess two lands with the mdfc but this hand's fine because we have faithless looting and we're drawing lands anyway i mean we got the burvok so if we can find a mind breaker to loot away we're pretty close to comboing Cold Steel Heart. So opponent has to be some sort of artifact ramp deck. We'll keep another Consider. Consider is nice because it does, it does let us put a card in the graveyard, which is helpful with Mind Breaker. Yeah, let's just play the tap land. I think we just pass and Consider again. Spring Leaf Drum. So it's gotta be some sort of affinity deck. 
thirst for discovery all right well hmm that's a weird choice why thirst for discovery when you can pay thirst for knowledge in artifact deck all right more well we're gonna start faithlessly looting at some point about it gonna draw some cards and yeah i feel like if you're an artifact deck isn't thirst for knowledge just almost strictly better all right they have a basic to discard well, play the land and run out Burabok while your opponent's step down. Mono Blue shouldn't be too good at killing stuff. Oh, okay. Well, maybe they're just playing both. That may that makes more sense. Ponus is a thirst tribal over there. <laughs> oh, all we need is Rampacious Dragon from uh, Jumpstart, and it'll it'll truly be thirst tribal. Discard, Faithless Looting, discard a land. <laughs> land, discard. I don't even know. I guess an unholy. And our opponents, they're not doing anything. What are we? <laughs> What are we trying to play around here? Artifacts, land drop, oh, key to the archive. Well, yeah, that's kind of a scary card. We're gonna counter that. Who knows what that'll find? Well, expressive iteration's pretty good, but let's faithless suiting first. If we hit a mind breaker, well, okay. If we had hit a mind breaker, we just win, most likely. Discard a land, discard unholy. Opponent's not really showing us much to kill here. Let's expressive iteration. Fading hope to hand. Unholy heat back in the deck. Land exile. Play the land and pass. Well, let's charge a course, actually. Might as well. I don't think leaving up spell pierce is that important. There's a mind breaker. All right. Well, I mean, do something, opponent. <laughs> you gotta do something, buddy, or else. All right. Tome of the Infinite, sure. It's like Alchemy Tribal over there. Alchemy Thirst Tribal, Magic in 2022. So it can conjure up random things from the spell book. There is some removal, I think. It's all one drops, one mana spells. So I think like Swords to Plowshares is in there. Light of Hope gain four life. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, well, we're going for it. My Breaker, combat, do you have an answer? Hopefully not, we do have the spell beers. Swing. <laughs> <laughs> mill em all, mill em all, opponent. <laughs> Take six, not that it matters because they got mill twinned. <laughs> this deck is like actually kind of busted. Based on what we've seen, I guess we just want counters and maybe an artifact deck probably has graveyard hate, relic of progenitus or something. Go down some of the creature removal. And yeah, we're like that. Just keep twinning. I am not really sure what our opponent's deck is trying to do, honestly. I don't even know if they know. They're playing all these random, random like conjure effects, so they might not even. Well, all right. There's a mind breaker and double counter spell. It seems fine. A bonus island and moon snap prototype. Well, Spire Bluff Canal. Faithless looting. Oh, there's a Burbach too. Okay. Uh, well, discard and discard. Ah, this might be the, the twin kill, the turn four, turn four wombo combo. Opponent. More moon snare prototypes. Ooh, and misses their land drop. That's sad for our opponent. I'll play the land past the turn. Did you find a land? Ornithopter of, I have no idea what this deck's doing. Uh, we're gonna counter that. It makes mana. At this point, keeping our opponent mana screwed seems beneficial. Ooh, they found the land, okay. Well, I mean, we also found the land. So, Shivenry, Burvok, and a bonin. Find an answer, die. Can you stop the twinning? Moonsnare prototype, that doesn't do it. A bonin passes. Hmm, are we gonna go for it? You know what, let's, let's wait. We have, next turn, we can also leave up negate it's pretty safe with our opponent just having colorless mana our opponent's deck is just so weird i have no idea what they're doing i'm not sure there's a colorless spell though that could blow us out but i'm very sure that this turn if we mystical dispute this and untap like there's no way there's no way now we're definitely going for it mind breaker attack ya mill ya beat ya it's a combo and <laughs> <laughs> this deck's been so busted. Well, I the only thing I dislike about this deck is I don't know if it's against the odds. Like, we're just, it, this might be better than modern Splinter Twin back in the day. Are we going to get an irrational banning? <laughs> only Wizards knows. Well, let's keep doing that. Sweet, sweet. Against the odds time, we are doing some uh, twinning. Some... <laughs> Twin but with Mill on Magic Arena, playing some uh, crazy and Mindbreaker combo, and this hand is sort of the nut draw. Uh, discard Mindbreaker and Faithless Looting. I mean, we have 
We have the turn four combo kill, right? Tap land, Burvok, Mindbreaker, GG. Ooh, mono red. Reckless ringleader gonna haste something up. Opponent gets and hits us, sure. Uh, yeah, let's play the Juari Disruption. I mean, I think red is usually not great at killing creatures with four toughness. So there's probably a decent chance we can just run out this Burvok and it lives. The opponent gets and hits us. Down to 18. Unholy heat. I mean, <laughs> this is too good to pass up. Run out the Burvok. If it dies, then I guess we'll Faithless Looting and find another one. Do they realize how close to disaster they are? <laughs> Maybe not. Or else they just can't do anything about it. But, uh, yeah, well, uh, this is a good twin kill. Ramping to Frozen on with Haze hits us. Doesn't really matter, though, because it is twin time. Dereezy and Mindbreaker combat. And, well, I mean, this is... <laughs> there it goes. I will not get tired of just seeing that entire deck go away. Uh, yeah, that was the cleanest twin kill yet. Like, we just... Burbach on three... Get back the Mind Breaker with Unearth on turn four. Gotcha. Oh, so Brotherhood's End in. Brothers End is so good because not only can it sweep away the aggro creatures, but it can get rid of like a Graft Digger's Cage or something. Some of the some of the hate cards. Probably bring in a couple of Crackling Drakes. It seems like a good Drake matchup since it's a relevant blocker. Go down some of the expensive counters and maybe the fading help. Let's try it like that. If we can keep doing that, boy, maybe this deck is actually just really good. We are on the draw for game number two. We got a bunch of removal and a bunch of faithless lootings. What are you growling at, Bear? What's the matter, bud? There's nothing out there. We're good. A bonus. Sorry. Sorry, Bear was growling his only out the window. Faces of Kazakhan. Hmm. Well, Faithless Looting into a bunch of lands. I mean, I do like the amount of removal we have. That's something about it. And we have zero combo pieces. Uh, uh, Robber of the Rich with a counter. That counter is actually super annoying here. It's a uh, steals. Oh, expressive iteration. All right. Well, we would rather rogues not keep attacking. Are we going to spend two removal spells? I think we have to. <laughs> doesn't feel good but we really like pony doesn't have many cards they did mulligan once we really don't want them to express a iteration about it flips the saga hits us 14 Ooh, passes okay well we need to loot away some of these lands and find some action all right burbok is is action that counts discard discard land and more sagas i mean i Guess we probably run out Burvok. Yeah, play the land, run out Burvok, leave up our removal. We need to find Mindbreaker though. Takes up the saga, plays a land. Reckless ringleader with a counter, sure. Goes to combat, uh, attacks. Oh no, oh, ringleader's a rogue, hmm, okay. Oh, that's what I get for, no oh my goodness, okay. And an Ember Cleave. That's doubly awkward. Uh, yeah, block the ringleader, take infinite. Oh, this is this is a bad spot to be in. All right, we need to consider into exactly Mind Breaker. All right, mill the spike field hazard. Draw land. This expressive iteration is going to come back to haunt us. Discard the Burvok. Discard the Juari disruption. Land on red. Oh, this is so awkward. Oh, we're just dead on board, aren't we? Well, I guess we're not technically dead on board. We gotta kill whatever has the Ember Cleave, block something. They do have the Ramen on Bruins. Oh, but there's no way we can, hmm. Yeah, let's just, I think we're dead enough. <laughs> dead enough that we're just gonna scoop it up. We technically could have survived a turn, but I don't think there's any realist. Well, hmm, that might've been an early scoop. I guess technically we could have drawn a Faithless looting with zero cards and just looted into Mindbreaker. So I guess we should have waited one more turn, but we were in a very, we were in a very bad spot. All right, bring in the Fading Hopes again. I think we just want all the cheap removal possible. We are in the play. We are in the play, which should be a pretty big deal, especially against a deck like Mono Red, which is just so fast. We will play first. Hopefully this is more like game one than game two. Well, I mean, this is this is fine. A lot of pain lands is awkward, but pathway on blue, go. I think this is one of those matchups where we'll just spell pierce anything we can, pretty much. Like a saga. Spell Pierce, stop the one drop. Mm, I don't think it's fine. Let's start a course. 
go digging. Ooh, Crackles, A. Uh, yeah, let's discard Spike Field Hazard past the turn. Crackles isn't bad. It's not bad. Robber the Rich, but being on the play, this gets a lot worse since it's not actually going to draw our opponent a card. Well, Spire Bluff Canal and pass the turn. So if our opponent's going to be able to steal a card with a robber, I think we'll do something about it. If not, then we probably just take two fervent champion and reckless ring later. Wow, so much haste in this deck. Does every does every creature in this deck have haste? I mean, especially with reckless ring later, it feels like it. Do we want to spend our unholy heat? Yeah, probably. We're going to have to kill this robber at some point. Get rid of the robber. The nice thing about Fading Hope is it can technically save like a Burbok or something from a removal spell. A bonus hits us to 16. Archmage's Charm. That's actually kind of cute. The steal a one drop mode could actually be pretty good here. If we steal Fervent Champion, the Ringleader can't attack either. And we still have the Fading Hope. Well, we're not close to comboing, but we're also, I don't think too close to dying. Robber of the Rich returns. We could counter it, but I think this is fine. I think we'd rather just steal the Fervent Champion and then bounce the Robber. Get to Scry, Spike Field to the bottom. I mean, we need combo pieces. Combo pieces and card filtering. Opponent. Can't really attack because we have first strike. Well, I mean, we're keeping our life total high. Keeping our opponent off Ember Cleave creatures. Eh, we will not complain about more unholy heats. Run out the crackles. <laughs> Draw Juari disruption. Sure. And maybe we go on the beat down plan now. This is a six power flyer. Does not take that many attacks to close out the game with the crackles. If it lives. It does have to live. All right, opponent's gonna fry it. Can't do anything about that. I mean, I guess the good news is that's a removal spell that's not killing Burbok if we ever get to combo. Faithless Looting's nice. That is a good one. Consider in Burbok. Are we gonna discard on Holy Heat? I think so. Yeah, I mean, run out the Burbok and... <laughs> if we have the best Consider of all time, we could win next turn. We need our one Surveil off Consider to be Mindbreaker, essentially. And the Burbok to live. If they have another Fry or something, we get pretty sad. Well, we've... Relic of Pro... Ooh, Genitus, that's gonna be an issue. Oh, oh, Robber the Rich, okay. Wow, okay, so... <laughs> now we really need this considered hit a Mind Breaker, or else we're kinda out of luck because this Relic just stops us forever, but they can't activate it this turn. Consider... Oh my god! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> Wow, we got so lucky. Wow, it literally had to be the top card of our deck or else that Relic just wins our opponent this game most likely. We'd have to try to win with Crackles. Oh my God. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, mm, better lucky than good. Better lucky than good. And that was super lucky, but yeah, twinned him. <laughs> Should have left your man up. So what did we learn this week about Splinter Twin, but with Milan Magic Arena. And the deck was kind of insane. The Splinter Twin thing was supposed to be kind of a meme because of the three mana into four mana play, win the game on the spot combo aspect in the is it colors. That's the like callback to Splinter Twin. But after playing the deck, it might actually just be Splinter Twin. We went five and one with the deck. And the one loss was actually a second match to blue white control. And I just didn't feel like playing it. So I scooped in game number one for the sake of diversity. So we're kind of almost five and oh with the deck, which is actually really impressive. The the plan worked really, really well. We got to see the just the nut draws of the deck where we just kind of were like, hey, if you can't deal with this, you win. Burbok on three, Unearth Mindbreaker on four, get ya. But we also got to see the deck be pretty resilient and be able to play the long game and be able to fight through our opponent's disruption and kill our opponent's hate cards and eventually be able to combo off on like turn seven, turn eight and win the game that way. And I gotta say, it is a satisfying win. When you see the Mind Breaker attack and your opponent's entire library just like flips up on Arena and ch -ch 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 every card goes in the graveyard, it feels so incredibly good. So I gotta say, maybe this deck is actually kind of competitive, more so than I expected it to be. If anything, the only downside of this deck is it might be too good to actually be an against the odds deck. It might just be an actual real deck that you can play and win with in Historic on Magic Arena. So anyway, that is Mill Twin for Arena. That's better against the odds for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon.